Now, countries like Poland and Finland to donate theirs. Moscow's warning the move will escalate the conflict. And that's your news update. It's two minutes past seven. News talk weather. Thanks to Ryanair. Forget the flowers this Valentine's. Take her to Paris or Pisa instead with Ryanair's low fares. Tonight will be cold and dry with clear spells and some patches of mist and hill fog. Highs of 3 degrees Celsius. Now you're up to date on News Talk. The News Round on Off The Ball. With Gillette. Start your day in flow with the new Gillette Labs Razor with exfoliating bar. This is News Talk. Welcome along to Wednesday night's Off The Ball. It's Richie McCormick here with you at the helm until 10pm tonight. And on the way, we'll be speaking to Mayo star Podrick O'Hora. We'll be looking at his life under the new Mayo management, his return from injury and his trying to avoid uh, becoming Mayo's own Samson. All that will be revealed a little bit later on. We'll be talking Australian Open with Molly McAwee as Novak Djokovic eased into the semi-finals with the straight sets win this morning over Andre Rublev. We'll be looking ahead to tomorrow morning's women's semi-finals with Molly as well. Wednesday night rugby, we've got Fiona Hayes, we've got Rory O'Connor, we're looking at Bundyaki, the John Ryan situation, which is ever more fascinating at Munster, especially given his performances in Europe so far this season, and just who will partner Gary Ringrose in the centre for Ireland once the Six Nations commences in just over a week's time. And the football show is on the way after 9 o'clock tonight. Gavin Cooney of the 42.ie is going to join us in studio. And Nottingham Forest playing host to Manchester United tonight in the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg. We'll be talking every Everton, Darren Randolph is on the move, Conor Ronan is on the move, and there's lots, lots more to get to as well. You can text us 53106, and you can tweet us at Off The Ball. Uh, Mick McCarthy joins us in studio again. Mick, good evening. Hello, Richie. And indeed, Amory Donlan is here as well. Uh, evening, Amory. Hi. We had uh, Padraig O'Hara on uh, a little bit later on. Um, it's uh, obviously, for those of you keeping an eye on our social media streams, you'll see the evidence of that. Uh, but one of the most interesting upshots to come from that chat with Padraig was that he has no time for watching football outside of his own involvement. Yeah, or any sport at all, really, he says, which I always find jarring. It's just a remarkable thing because these people are so involved. There's just, I don't know whether it's a national bias that, that I'm sure the three of us in this room share that we've always been so drawn towards sport and watching it that you assume that when you play at such a high level, yeah. you're going to have this interest. But, like, you know, you asked about... And the Kilmer Cone situation is just like I don't I just don't watch games. <laughs> I haven't watched a game of football since whatever it was. You know, you're just kinda of going and it's it, I find it so admirable, I have to say, because you that can Kilmer still Kilmer question was so refreshing to have somebody who didn't, didn't watch have it an opinion. and didn't have an opinion. Like, good, <laughs> yeah. good thank you. Good. Just let it pass by. Just let it happen. But it's it see, almost seems unusual that somebody would be yeah, not I, watch anything at all. I was reaching for an example that was in my head and I don't think it's the case anymore, obviously, because it, it took me a while to remember, but he does pull the tree now and you can tell that he is watching the game and watching yeah. it like properly. But um, Jamie Heaslip used to talk it during his career about not watching rugby, yeah. just having no interest. Now, again, I don't know if it's that he has no interest in the game, because you can see his work at RT that he does. Like he under, like he knows the intricacies and kind of works. Like you know, I take, I would imagine, takes a certain enjoyment out of sort of picking a game apart. But uh, I do remember during his career, he just I have no interest. I just don't watch. It. I turn up for training. I, I remember not being able to get my head around. It was like. A sport like that, that is so much about patterns and it's so much about, you know, opposition research and it's about kind of like seeing the um, seeing the uh, trends in the game before, you know, on, you know yeah. and getting ahead of them and stuff like that. And it's just like, no, I just go train and do what they say. And, and he's like one of the most successful Irish international rugby players of all time. But now, like O'Hara, it's the exact same thing. It obviously just is a doable thing. Maybe I get it though, yeah. if you do something that routinely and it became almost a labour, yeah. the last thing you'd want to do. And obviously for professional sports people, it is literally a labour. I presume he slip was obviously watching analysis, like video analysis oh, yeah, as part yeah, of training. Yeah. yeah, so like on downtime, why would you want to do what you do at work? Yeah. When you're not at work. That's what I bloody do. Do you listen to <laughs> Off The Ball? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I, I, I'm normally here during Off The Ball, but I do listen. Uh, but it's also like, I mean, I suppose sport, you know, you're watching a lot of sport yeah. at the weekends and stuff like that that you don't necessarily have to Because you often hear that, like people who are like, say, mechanics, like the last thing you want to do is go and look at somebody else. Like if yeah. somebody goes to you, oh, by the way, I've got a problem with the engine, you never look at it, you're like, oh, God's sake, I don't want to. I understand, yeah. but you, like, I mean... 
I know it it's, looks your like it's more but sport yeah. is different. Like, we're, but obviously, it's not for everyone. Obviously, it's not for everyone. It, it's not like we were looking through other people aside from Jamie Heaslip who weren't necessarily that involved in keeping tabs in their profession. Ben White is another one at Arsenal, the Arsenal England defender. Okay, can't be bothered watching football. Um, Gar- or Carlos Tevez that came across in the match on Sunday by the way but uh, yeah. he's had a good season Carlos Tevez apparently told Clarine in 2018 I don't like football if Barcelona versus Real Madrid is on and on the other channel it's a golf tournament I'll watch the golf I've never been a fanatic for watching games I like to play to have the ball at my feet which is essentially the same uh, sentiment that Porter came out with yeah. earlier on that he just you know if he's involved I'd imagine and I'd put this to him that Porter said he'd play any sport yeah, either it wasn't it's not even just football but, yeah. but you'd imagine a coach would almost find that really jarring and galling that you, you'd almost view watching other games and watching other sports as research In mm. if you're a sports person. The other one that came up as well is David Batty, which kind of possibly explains why he's not involved in punditry. Yeah. Which is, you know, I think a loss. You would have thought that his uh, gruff Yorkshire way <sighs> would be perfect for some Leeds matches. No, no nonsense. The yeah. very definition of no nonsense. Have you yeah. ever seen that uh, video compilation it's when Leeds were just champions, the pre-season tournament, the Makita tournament that they used to have in England, which would involve invariably an Italian side that was more often than not Sampdoria. But um, <laughs> there's, this, there's a video compilation uh, of Leeds playing Sampdoria, Ellen Road, where Batty just goes out to annoy Sam players. So he's kicking lumps out of Mancini, he's kicking lumps out of Lombardo, and he's just doing it for fun, just to get himself through a pre-season. Press. So maybe that's how... He entertained himself during games just kicking people. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't thinking about uh, how this was looking on match of the day later on. No, he's not a man to go flicking tees at people either, uh, as we've seen with Patrick Reed and, and Rory McIlroy today. Oh, yeah. Been on top of this? Segway. I did see it, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I, I like that it's devolved down from courtroom drama, high-level sporting organisations, you know, l- you know, butting heads in the courtroom and elsewhere, to one lad chucking the tee at another yeah. and the other one getting thick at him. And you're like... Yes, this yeah, is what for, it should for be. For all the reasoning that is behind it, and it's quite legitimate, this ultimately comes down to two guys who just don't like each other. You know, Class, as, as you it? said, it's devolved into that like school ground kind of, you know, chucking something at someone because you're a bit of a, <laughs> you're a bit of a arsehole, <laughs> let's face it, when it comes to Patrick Reed. Also, don't. just to flick a golf tee, it's like, yeah. oh, tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> and his excuse was, he, I think Patrick Reed said they were, they were live uh, branded golf tees, so I thought I might throw one his way, oh. which is class. <laughs> so it's just like, that's how petty it is. And I kind of, I'd, I'd like that it's, oh, it's devolved to that level of pettiness. Yeah. I, like, it obviously has really serious stuff behind it, but it is funny. That, But that's the kind of thing that almost seems, when you see that the... The, the PGA Tour are taking the case and wanting to expand it to their, their countersuit against Live Golf. They now want to include the Saudi Public Investment Fund and Mr. Al Ryan, who's obviously the chair of that and obviously involved with Newcastle as well. Uh, they, they're now extended that way. But you kind of feel that the thing that doesn't have the, the, that will have more weight in the public court of public opinion is live golfers throwing tees at PGA Tour golfers. They don't care about the courtroom stuff. <laughs> They'll see these guys, taking, the guys taking Saudi money and now chucking their tees. They just, <laughs> she's like, here's a tee, chucking it at somebody's... Oh, it was the main topic of conversation in Rory's presser today. Um, he got a bit frustrated, actually, because it was <laughs> all the journalists were interested in and he kind of shot down the final question. But it's so much juicier than the difficult legal tell me, stuff. Tell me how, and, and tell me how your swing is looking ahead of the new season. Right? Yeah, and indeed, yeah, the Middle Eastern yeah. Uh, swing yeah. of the DP World Tour. Uh, David Batty's the most famous of them all. Uh, one texter says, I just want more David Batty in my life. Somebody needs to track down and do it. I really David love Batty. David Batty. He was, like a, he was one of those players that never played for a team that I supported, but I always... You know, when, you know when you're watching like England and there's like lads you like... You don't necessarily want England to win, but you want the certain players to play well. I always wanted Batty on instead of Ince. You know what I mean? For some reason, he was just a player that I always liked. Yeah. Better, better player than Paul Ince. Well, there you go. That's, right. well, that's, well, that's well, certainly well, what I thought. Well, well, 53106, Kevin Cullen. Bobby Zamora. There's a name. Uh, also famously disinterested in football outside of the game. Punditry, though. We'll do punditry for money, but purely a job. <laughs> <All right. laughs> See, that's the thing. I, I reckon because Padre Gohora has such a... Uh, a pristine look on football and that he hasn't had it tainted by just watching it over and over and over again that if you were to actually get him to do punditry on a game I think he'd be really insightful and would offer something different that mm. you don't ordinarily get from your your run-of-the-mill pundit Yeah 
There's also an element that he wouldn't be swayed by years of commentary and analysis. Yeah. Which, you know, I was I wanted to talk to you about Gary Neville's, you know, subconscious bias towards United as well as the conscious stuff. No, but yeah. it's the subconscious stuff is the most jarring because it means that you have the big long conversation yeah. about uh, Arteta's antics and don't see the fact that he was pointing out that Saka was being targeted for, you know, f four challenges by Shaw. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, hold on, okay, so the entire conversation's about Arteta now. But you can w watch that game and you can tell that Neville is making such a conscious effort to be supportive of Arsenal and get behind him. But when it came down to something as simple as that, Blinkers. it was just like, that's a nothing challenge. That's mm. a nothing challenge. What's wrong with Arteta? It was like, he had four fingers up in the air, absolutely ignored by the broadcast. Anyway, my point to go... <laughs> I went on a rant there. It was a segue. It was a tangent almost. What's, what's your point, Mick? My, my, my what's point, your point, Eamon, Richie, uh, is that... Um, I can't remember my point now. <laughs> <laughs> that he, he, no, he my point is that Horrigo Harabu watching he's sitting here watching the game and he wouldn't be thinking about blanket defences and all of these things that we've been, you know, just have have like just piled on us over the years that their opinions have become ours over time because yeah. we've listened to the analysis for so long. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting one. 53106, keep those texts coming. Tweet us as well, at Off The Ball. Uh, as, if you want to also get involved in uh, my own personal inward bet that I have going on, found out Nathan Murphy is off on Monday and he's off to a gig, was looking up the Dublin listings and it's one of two things that Nathan Murphy is going to. And I want to know what the off-the-ball audience think Nathan is going to go to. Okay. So, so it's either Lewis Capaldi, which I think is in the three arena, or editors in the National Stadium. Okay. They're the only two gigs in Dublin. As far as I can going see, to yeah. anything like the Workman's or uh, like, you know, something Monday, Monday's usually a bad night for Wheels. Okay, Workman's right, okay. So is it going to be Lewis Capaldi or editors? I think Nathan's on tomorrow, isn't he? Uh, I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, no, sorry, Nathan's yeah. presenting tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. So we'll find out. Yeah. You can ask them straight in the news round. Capaldi or editors, I'd be interested to see what they, the listeners think. Uh, but the news round is brought to you with Gillette Labs for an effort that's finished to your day. Uh, there's another Carabao Cup first leg in the semi-finals on tonight, Amory. Yeah, the City Ground is tonight's venue as Nottingham Forest host Manchester United in the first leg of their semi-final. Ahead of this game, Forest manager Steve Cooper said that Jesse Lingard could make his return from injury against his former club and he is on the bench, so there is a possibility that we'll see this. The midfielder has been out with a hamstring issue he suffered against this evening's opponents at the end of last month. Last night, Newcastle took a big step towards the final that was with a 1-0 win over Southampton at St Mary's. Kickoff tonight between Forest and United is at 8. Yeah, Terrell Malassia back in the United defence tonight as well. Veghor starting up front. Anthony remains in the starting 11 there too. Uh, no Luke Shaw involved in the matchday squad. Brandon Williams is on the bench indeed uh, for them tonight. And there is, as Amory says, an 8 o'clock kickoff in that one. Uh, Gavin Cooney will be along for the football show uh, after uh, 9 o'clock tonight. And we'll be keeping tabs on that. Um, we've got uh, another uh, we've, Portugal Horror wasn't getting involved today but uh, somebody else was on OTBAM regarding the Kilmacud and Glenn situation I'm so jealous that this hasn't taken over his life like it has ours. Kilmacud <laughs> Croaks have three days to lodge a counter-objection to the CCCC. Over the result of the All-Ireland Club football final, Derry's Glen lodged their objection to the result of the game, which they lost by two points. Croaks had more than 15 players on the pitch for the final passage of play. Speaking to OTBAM this morning with Jaron Shane, former GAA president Nicky Brennan said he has sympathy for both clubs involved. He said no one set out to do anything wrong and that a replay is the right thing to do. We were asking earlier on what's the right thing to do in this instance. If you take away, strip away the rules and the procedures, what's your instinct? Uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a GAA man to the core, what's your instinct about what the right thing to do here is? Yeah, the right thing to do here is replay the game. So I, I have no problem saying that whatsoever. But you made a very good point there about the rules. We're going to have the GA Congress in a couple of weeks' time. Now, it's probably too late to put motions into that. But I, I wish people now who are talking about the rules and that the GA shouldn't, sh that needs clarity, let them sit down and let them put wording on the rule that would enable what you've just said to happen. But bear in mind that from an association point of view, while the club final is, is the pinnacle of any club player's uh, game, the GA would look under that. It's no different than if it was a, a junior B game down in some other county as well. The same set of rules must apply. You can't have two different rule books. So how that would be interpreted within a rule 
to deal with something that is you're, it's, it's morally right that there'll be a replay. But it's not just as simple as that. If you're if you're if you're playing around with the rules like that, uh, you you certainly will be causing yourself some difficulty and difficulty to officers around the country in their interpretation of that rule relating to their own competition. So that's how I see it. Notwithstanding the moral issue that you 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 quite rightly uh, bring forward. Yeah, pretty significant that Nicky Brennan, uh, former GA president, would say that a replay looks likely. And indeed, that seems to be the way the wind is blowing tomorrow night. It looks like we'll probably know tomorrow at some stage, hopefully. Yeah. You kind of, if the, the main question is, is when they deliver a verdict on this and versus when the replay, if that happens to be the outcome of it is. Mm. Because deciding on a replay uh, tomorrow at some stage, at any stage, and then having the match on a Saturday, it won't be this week. No, Saturday's no. out. No, sure, it can't be tomorrow because if Croaks have three days from when Lodge, Glenn lodged their appeal, that goes into Friday. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there's so yeah. I I don't know if we'll know this week for sure, but I think we'll as in when. Mm. But I think we'll know, you know, tomorrow as to what the decision is. Anyway, look, we all know. I think it I, I, as the week has gone on, it's become more and more obvious that we're trending towards a replay. Once they lodge the appeal, there really is no. Come back. I mean, there was technically seventeen men on the field. Yeah, you know what I mean. There is no arguing this. You know what I mean. If you, if it was Paul, if Paul Manning was the sixteenth man instead of seventeenth, then maybe we would be in a place where, you know, there there would be a grey area. It's There's none here. This is happening. going to be a replay. <laughs> the question is when. And uh, yeah, like I mean, I'll be very, very happy to see some finality on this. I have to say that I was just going to get to that point. I I don't know if it's, and I'm pretty sure it probably is. The fact that we're living in a social media age, whereby you have the news scrolling by your eyes every couple of minutes and every time you pick up your phone, this feels like back when I was young, lad. This would have had legs, would have gone on for a week or more, would have fed countless editions of Live Line and, and indeed, indeed our own show. Whereas now we're three days removed from it and it already feels like it's wheezing and on its knees in terms of a story. And yeah. I think the, the appetite to keep hearing about this is probably See, waning. I know what you mean. And I do think that I do think that issue exists. In this case, I don't think that's it. For me, this is, it's actually quite a simple matter. And then there's there's people who'll blame croaks and there's people who'll blame referees and there's people who'll uh, say the Glen should take their beating that it took you know but they're kind of on the fringes for the most part people say oh, what an unfortunate situation it's absolutely cut and dry there has to be a replay this game has to be played and because of that there's just not there's nothing new you know what it. I mean so it's like yeah you know, we I I thought it was important we spoke to Ryan Dwyer last night and it was I thought it was important to get the side of Kilmacud feeling vilified sure. out there because that's not what needs to happen in this either, you know, but now you're into a point where, right, okay, that side is expressed. Where are we now? We're waiting for the date on the replay, you know? Maybe the GEA shouldn't have made Glenn appeal, but they did, and that was yesterday, and they've appealed. Yeah. You know, so that's, it's a, point, yeah. that's why I think, I just don't know if there's a huge amount of places to go at this stage. Uh, On the date, though, there's been suggestions <clears throat> today of St. Patrick's Day, which would just be a disaster in terms of we'd have six more weeks of this. Now, obviously, it would leave the news cycle, but six weeks of this hanging over the two clubs, first of all. Like, yeah. do they go back training for a six week period? And obviously, a build up to that, like, it'd be a disaster to have so long. But also, this could now run into, well, it will run into the inter county scene. Yeah. And St. Patrick's weekend <clears throat> is the penultimate weekend of the National League where Derry and um, Dublin and, and Galway. Galway. Galway play Armagh. And Marie's very preoccupied with whether Shane Walsh is going to be playing. <laughs> Gal Galway play Armagh in Armagh on the 18th of March. If Shane Walsh lines out for Croaks on St. Patrick's Day and Galway are in a relegation battle, like... I can't see yeah. them stretching it on that long. But if it there's, does, there's if it does, you play for your club and it's not uh, Kill McCud's fault that Shane Walsh is playing for a club that he has no in relationship but with and he didn't grow up playing. Why did you have to open that can of worms again? <laughs> Why? It's only a joke. But there's been so many mistakes here made and so many times when the right thing could have been done that hasn't been done. I just hope so much that the date is gotten right now and we don't yeah. see something like that. It'll be Saturday week, won't or it? We like, don't I mean, see that's a clash. Has to be. Do Derry or Dublin... 
or Galway play next Saturday? <laughs> Uh, I don't know actually. I don't think is is there two weeks in a row to start off the. There is. But I, I think I think it's understandable to lose players at this time of year. You know, it's not the end of the world, and you know, it's it's just, it's just something that happens that you're without club players this time of year. I know we're getting to the stage where that won't be the case anymore, but like I'm not sure these guys will be playing next week anyway. It's probably in a few weeks time in round that's three and I four. Mean, that's what I mean. If you were to go issue, yeah. down to St Patrick's Day and it's a big it won't, brunch though, match, it won't. I can't see it going that far because they have the window to play it now for them to not be affected in the early rounds when they probably wouldn't be playing these guys anyway. We're probably pushing them pack one round to round three or four of the of the league, and they'll be there come the business end. Do we reach a situation where? Uh, one of the counties raise an objection that their players are being involved in club football beyond oh the window. God, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here, here we go. It's, yeah, only, no, yeah. it's only the 25th of January and we're already in these uh, hypothetical situations as to who will lodge the most I'm, appeals I'm just in the GEA season. No, but it's based be, on something. Yeah. Perhaps a hurling weekend that where there's no football. That like would be the natural just bit of cop on. Just yeah. do the right thing with the date. Like so many things have gone wrong so far. And by do the right thing with the date you mean free up Shane Walsh to play in the league for No, Galway. like yeah. it'd be awful for the likes. Like Derry to play without Connor Glass would be cruel. True, you know? true, true. Uh, Davey's been on on the Twitter saying uh, I remember Stephen Ireland around the time uh, of the Ireland fallout saying football was SH1T and he didn't like it. It's well, that colour me shocked. God, there, there you go. Uh, John has also taken issue in Umbridge, indeed, with the David Batty versus Paul Ince row, which has now become the, the hotbed of social media chatter tonight, Mick. Hood and thunk. Uh, Ince was twice the player sideways Batty ever was. Sideways Ince, Batty. Ince could do it all. Batty couldn't, says John. Do you know what? Like, Without getting into it now... Let's get into it. Ince was a more complete player than Batty. I just liked Batty because he was competitive and I didn't really care if England won or not. I think Ince was a better player than him. I, I, I think... He I, was a much more complete player, Richie. Like I, th- Batty I think he was, was oversold. Batty was re- like a... He was one note. Yeah, but can you really trust a player who dubs himself, themself, right, the governor? <laughs> G-U-E-V, G-V even, apostrophe <laughs> N-O-R. Like, he gave himself you can't give yourself the nickname see, this is what I mean it's this like rocking up in school and going hi don't call me Mick call me Spike from now on <laughs> and people just looking at you going Spike. I don't know I plucked a nickname from the sky <laughs> it just you can't do it you would laugh at somebody in the playground who did that. Without, without a doubt but uh, I don't know if it would affect his footballing ability it affects his popularity I think do you know what it could affect his popularity he's, he's, he's after building himself up to call himself the GUV Apostrophe N O R. Well, I've never known anyone like when when he left to go to Man United from West Ham. West Ham fans like I've never heard anything like the vitriol that he Nasty. used to see in, in at yeah. those games. And uh, it might have been some of that. I don't know. If I always thought there was a there's a racial another element, element to yeah. that as well. Yeah, yeah, but. yeah for sure. Uh, let's move on and get more details on the uh, the Roy McIlroy, Patrick Reed, T Gate, Amory. McElroy has described a moment where Patrick Reed reportedly threw a tea at him this week as a storm in a teacup. McElroy says he can't remember it happening, but admits that he did ignore the American on the driving range in Dubai. Reed is taking legal action over the repercussions from joining Live Golf, of which McElroy has been extremely critical. Speaking ahead of the Hero Dubai Desert class- Classic, he says that Reed can't expect a warm welcome from other players. I didn't see it. I, I, uh, I was down by my bag, and um, he came up to me, and I was busy working and sort of doing my practice, and I didn't really feel like I didn't feel the need to acknowledge him. So um, I didn't see it he come in my direction at all. But uh, apparently, that's what happened. What? Um, and if rules were reversed and I had to throw that tea at him, I'd be expecting a lawsuit, so. <laughs> you didn't duck then, Rory? Huh? You didn't duck. I didn't duck? You didn't duck. No, you didn't feel the need to duck. I didn't see it. No, no my no. back was turned to him. So. Did you, just without labouring the point, I mean, a guy who's uh, landed you with a subpoena, do you think he's probably not entitled to expect you to greet him with open arms? I mean, exactly, right? Like, that's... I mean, I got a subpoena on Christmas Eve. Like, I mean, I'm, I, I don't see... You're like you can't pretend like nothing's happening, right? I think that's the thing. It's like why? That's you know we're we're you know we're living in reality here. He's 
not. So there you go that's Rory McIlroy and Marie thank you and uh, Mick as well or Spike as I should call you from now on thank you for uh, your I input in the news round. I had nothing to do with that so that would be just uh... Uh, Padraig O'Hara on the way but first Cash Machine time Your chance to win big News Talks Cash Machine for Cathy's record win on Tuesday we had another missed call today if you've entered since 5pm yesterday you remain in the draw but need to know the new number which is €30,827.53 that's €30,000 Eight hundred and twenty-seven euro and fifty-three cent. Three zero eight two seven point five three. Text play to five seven double five seven. That's play to five seven double five seven. Get your entry in by three p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Then across the Go Loud network of stations, Barry Dunn is going to make that call. And if your phone rings, answer it within five rings. Tell them the exact amount in euro and cent, and you'll win that amount in cash. So the amount to remember 